Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 5 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six version 65. So, for today we have a stable city in front of us, which is pretty cool as these guys can now go on pretty much for an indefinite amount of time. We have a steady income of food, we will sooner or later see people die off of old age, but beyond that there is nothing that can stop the city except for a few factors that we will take care of today in this in this episode. We are going to start to build up some military force and we're going to do a couple of other things in between these lines as I want to work a little bit around these screens more as we will be working around with these even more and more the longer we play this game. I want to introduce these slow little by little and after this episode i do plan to go into the many industries of the game and show you how to optimize them what's connected with what and so on and so forth now first and foremostly we want to get ourselves some where is it at some military the only thing you really deeply need is a training ground so at the training ground we can send people to train up to be soldiers this is pretty much all you need to get up some some people that can fight for you so we're going to set up one of these thingies here a bit large and we need training dummies as you see here we're going to go for something like that because a very smart person told me that stuff on the walls is most of the time more efficient than these double things we were talking about ovens that time but i think this rule does apply in many many other ways except for the fact that i just blocked the entrance i have to do it like that as you see here the more training dummies the more um, furniture we need so I'll be starting out with a very low capacity like that and the room itself can be expanded later as we need it this way we will have a pretty quick build thing and we're going to work with it like that furniture after all is very costly and therefore we will use it sparingly so I also want to introduce another real nice tool for you as things are more and more complicated to build the longer you play the game. Here in the logistics menu I want to introduce the hauler to you. So the hauler is a small building, hauling station, and it basically just does one thing. It provides a certain material at exactly this spot. You can make haulers smaller, larger, as you see there, and they are well, let's see, currently they are not willing to do these. The, th the gist of it is that with a hauler you can just order, for example, wood to be transported to this place. So we are going to suspend this job for a second, as these people are a little bit too fast in this task. We want haulers. <laughs> yeah, to avoid this, build your haulers first before you build the project. That won't happen. So we can now set up somebody here, you see here, auto employed, to fetch wood, and the other stuff for this project would be stone. So these haulers now provide the materials to the spot, they'll just be walking there, and the builders can now do their job much, much faster while the haulers provide building material constantly. When you're done, you just delete the uh, room, was room deletion? Yeah and then the hauler job is gone, just like that. This is a really excellent little trick, and it becomes more and more important the, the, the larger your city grows, as we need really uh, a lot of material for certain buildings. And if you don't use haulers, you're, you will notice that your building speed will become rather slow over the course of the time. So this is really, really good stuff. I. This is such good stuff that, as somebody in the comments has mentioned, you can't even use it right from day one, and I agree with that sentiment. The only reason I didn't introduce it was that I personally think that episode one or two would have been a little bit much. But either way, now you know that trick, use it wisely, 
while we're building our training ground, we will now take a look on the religion side. I think I could use a couple of extra idle ha uh, odd jobbers, so let's recruit a few. And we also have a few cases of housing. Let's do that real quick before we continue. It's the usual drill. You check out where you find some place, then you press left contro uh, control and left click the building you want to copy and then you just build a couple of houses in the vicinity where they are needed the area of effect of the houses is pretty large don't you worry too much but you should always double check where these houses are actually needed so while that's all being constructed let's get down here so i want to introduce today religion so shrines can be built right from the get-go and they are new for version 65. In the past we were limited to temples, which are more of a late game building. Shrines are small scale providers for religious service. You can see here that we have four different main religions and you can see here how many worshippers of each religion are present. So as you see here, the majority of war people are Krador worshippers and we have a few Athuri worshippers and Aminian and uh, Shmalor are evil gods and these other guys are good gods to generalize it real quick. So it's quite easy, you no need to do much for that. You just should take care that the 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 shrine you're building is the one that you actually need. You also see here current worshippers 88% Current worshippers, eight person. You can read out here what the best shrine would be. For our little settlement, of course, we will build a shrine for the most prominent god. And as you can see here, we can also expand that. I see here that this thing is fit for 102 worshippers. That is just the size that we should go for, I think. I'll leave it up to you. These shrines are not too costy. The uh, crater one is the um, cheapest. Athuri costs stone. And a minion also stone. So these are really not costly. And they provide religious service for the entire city. And here it is again the same thing as it is with all those services. It just makes people outright happier. You will see that when the shrine meter fills, people get happier. It is though very important to note that there are internal conflicts between religions. So people are happiest if they can worship their each and every one of their gods. So we're going to build a small scale shrine for the other god over here. It has way less worshippers, so we're going to... Well, let's go for that version. So we're going to make it like that. Okay. Since we are now capable of producing just as much food as the city needs, you can easily pick up as many immigrants as you want to, as there is practically no real risk anymore for people starving out. You still should always only recruit people though if you know what they should be good for. It is a uh, pretty important rule of common sense here that it rarely goes well for you if you just spam the... Uh, immigration button like crazy without double thinking about what you're actually doing there so always keep in mind that people that come to your city they all require the same services that the other people need and there might be not enough service for everybody it's not only about the food that's the next thing that we're going to talk about so as you see here we got now a pretty good looking uh, service tab everything that's hovering between 60 to 80 percent is good as i see here the speakers are a little bit uh, underrepresented so we can just go over here to the speakers parlor left control and left click and we we just check out this one is here so our next population dense area will be more in this direction as I will have a large portion of farming and industry here. So we put up another speaker here. And because we're just crazy and wild about right now, we're also going to go and place down another speaker. 
just about here as we might be increasing our forestry and fishery businesses in the future so these people will stay informed as well. The cheaper a service is, the more generous you should always go with them. So among the cheapest there are, for example, wells, they only need to be built and that's that. They don't require workers even. The only thing that they do require is a little bit of uh, janitor workforce from time to time. But together with the hearths, they are the silent superstars of your service buildings as they really don't need any further attention. All the other things though, it's a little bit different as every building of these binds workers. So the lavatory binds a worker. The, oh, well, the janitor is not where I wanted to click. Um, here, the food stall binds workers. Every one of these uh, service buildings has the tendency to bind workers. And that is why you should always wait until a service uh, provision or providence radio, whatever, I can't make up the right word for that. But as soon as something falls below 60%, that's roughly the rate where I would recommend to act. Everything before that is just binding extra workers without any bigger payoff. If you are unlucky, you even end up with more workforce invested and less workforce returned in form of immigrants. So you should always wait until it is really necessary to do these things. That's just my personal experience with those. And another thing that is worth mentioning here, many buildings have a readout, like here, for example, the food stall. You see these light gray areas? That's roughly the area that this beautiful little thing can cover. So as soon as our city expands, we will need another food stall. That's how efficient these go. Here the market does the same thing. You should always try to achieve full coverage of these services. That's really important as your people really don't like to be out of poop uh, areas. So for example here, our soldiers need to walk further for their <coughs> human needs than they'd be like in that. So this direction is prone to need the next lavatory. So this way you can plan ahead in terms of your city development because in my experience that's been the most effective way of providing service. All right, so as you see here, the shrines are done and these are again silent providers of service that don't need anything extra from you. The shrine meter fills, as you see there, also does the happiness. At this point, we can authorize more immigrants than would be good for us. This is where we want to be. If this happens, congratulations, you have done all the things in the early game all, uh, correctly and you are absolutely ready to expand. The next important thing that we need is that training ground. By the way, it takes too long because there's a huge deposit of stone there that needs to be removed and that just takes quite some time. But time is not really something you need to be too worried about in this game. It just comes together. Now, next thing I want to talk is about the military. So this little training ground for starters is all we're going to build. There's way more we can do and will do, but for the beginning, the beauty about all that is that you can train yourself a couple of soldiers in there and that will protect you from raids already a bit. As you see there, there's a raid chance. The raid chance goes down the more fierce you look. So basically training a couple of soldiers is already a healthy measure as it will take the enemy, well, take, it'll take the yearly chance of raids down. That's just it. And that's why I personally would recommend building that training ground ASAP, as I think this is just a really, really well-invested amount of time. And are we bucked again, huh? What beauty? So let's see. I wonder if this little wooden wall thing in the center is or is our culprit. So this is one of the things that I personally did realize that was happening more often in this version. So I really don't know why that wooden wall is such a problem. Yeah, whatever. Just build it already. <laughs> All right. 
Perfect, now they did it. So that little piece of wall was a problem. You saw how to fix it. I guess there are better ways to fix it, but whatever. So recruits. We have here now six people working nonstop. You can do that as ever you, uh, you wish. I'm going to start with two people here right now. These will train up to be soldiers and in, I don't know if it is supposed to work like that. But the last time I tried this out, more and more people were picking up training. And over the course of the time, your people will all learn fighting a bit. I'll be monitoring this if this was a uh, intended thing or not. But you will notice that you will get here recruits and soldiers just by that. And it's a very low investment. And it already it already, do, already does something. You know, let's do this to document it uh, more closely. Okay, so let's see. The rate chance should go down over the course of the time. Now, since we have so many people waiting at the doors of War City, we're just going to authorize a couple of more of them, and then we're going to leave these people at their military duty, as that shouldn't be any big problem. In a nutshell, you can now dump whatever you have left in terms of workers for this uh, task to defend your city. You can just expand on that. These are the basics. Of course, there's more to that. You can create divisions. We're going to go over, all over that. But in the early phase, in my opinion, the most important thing is that you use this to scare off the enemy. And I strongly recommend whatever raider comes to your town, try to buy them off as the loss of money is way easier to compensate than the loss of lives because you know that does way down that does have a way heavier impact on your economy compared to just uh, having to earn a few more denarius now technology wise there's a couple of really cheap and powerful things that we are going to go for next for one, that's refined tastes, it allows us to upgrade our food stalls, and the other thing is paved roads, which allows us to create proper roads. We got, with the roads, not only a tool that provides us um, speed up for, for our people. Roads are really interesting, as they count into the happiness of your people. When we check out the environment area, you see that roads are actually contributing to the environmental happiness of your subjects. All of these things together form your loyalty and happiness meter, as we already know. But the interesting part here is that this means the more roads you got, the happier the people are. But there is an interesting caveat about that that I overlooked for a really, really long time. So. There is here, oh, let's check this out. Roads are having different stats. So dirt roads provide road excess 50% harmony and durability. Now, harmony is a special stat that is mostly important for Cretonians as they value nature and, uh, and such, they love harmony. But road excess 50% versus road excess 80%. What does this mean? It means that the dirt road can only fill the meter here up until 50%. Dirt roads cannot fill the happiness over this meter until I, unless I misunderstood that. Let me know if I did. In a nutshell, if you want to have really big happiness about roads, you need good roads. That actually does make a lot of sense to me. So if you have an endless source of stone available, you should totally go for stone roads ASAP as they provide more road access speed and they are more durable, which means your janitors have to work less. But Cretonians have this specific need for harmony. Harmony is a very special need and it is well provided by nature. So planting trees is providing harmony. When you check out the other species, so the Dondorians, that's the Songs of Six Dwarves, they don't value that stuff at all. You could plant as many trees as you'd wanted to, they wouldn't care. There's also spaciousness, so the more <clears throat> open space you provide, the better. Roundness, so the less rectangular things are in your settlement, the better. This is in about everything. Building shapes and uh, 
graveyard shapes, even mountain shapes. It all counts, as far as I know, with this version at least. And there's also a couple of other things that you can see here that are important for people. But here, battle is also another thing. Soldiers provide also happiness. So the construction of the uh, training ground has many, many advantages that we can take care of. So there is one thing that I... Oh no, we need to research that first. Yeah, never mind. I thought we could do that already. Okay, let's go for the refined taste thing. So let's explore the wonderful world of upgrades. So refined tastes requires the first pieces of pottery. So pottery is a new good that we don't see yet. And we need to import ourselves that as well. So as you see, import stations become more and more important the later the, down the, the game goes. So we're going to build a couple of these extra in advance. So we don't need to build every time a new one when a new need arises. Because in this game, I really recommend you to trade as much as you can, as trading provides you with everything you require. So for example, we should totally build ourselves now another export depot. Let's maybe build these up here so it's easier to keep track. As I do notice that we are overproducing meat, so we should totally sell away that meat. It's only going to spoil here. Every form of overproduction of your city should be exported, in my opinion. So whenever you see that these meters hit the red mark, you should ask yourself either, do I need more crates? Do I want to store more of that stuff because I'm not storing enough of it yet? Or can I easily sell off the overproduction because what I have stored is more than enough for my city? As pretty much everything in this game spoils, I mean, seriously, even gemstone spoils to a certain degree, it's always a wise choice to make sure that you sell off your overproductions. As you see here, meat is even a very costly good here, so our people, they hate meat. Oh well, they... they they don't hate it, but they, they don't like it particularly. So we can easily export the biggest portion of that. And we could also just increase our storage capacities a little bit and export even more of that overproduction. So let's do that. Two more crates for meat. There we go. So another thing that I want to introduce to you here are fetch crates. So fetch crates do to pick up the specific good from all the other warehouses in the vicinity. So if I'd be marking that, this warehouse would be trying to fetch all the meat from all the warehouses to store it in there. And sometimes that can be extremely useful. So for example, for a city core that is uh, pro that needs food and stuff to uh, provide to the citizens, you can build in a small warehouse that only has like one or two crates set and fetch so it will draw from the big warehouse that provides like 2000 units of that stuff and will try to always have 80 units of that stuff it won't drain your main warehouse but at the same time you will always have stuff provided to your citizens as needed i really like that method and i can strongly recommend it now we're going to go for some pottery crates now and we're going to import pottery now. So as you see, this is the something that we could also easily create ourselves if we'd wanted to. There's clay around the corner. I don't know, do we have already the pottery? We would need to research the pottery, but if your map tile does have a uh, specific bonus on clay, for example, it might be a wise choice to actually produce that stuff yourself. Every city behaves a little bit differently. There is no one-size-fits-all solution for uh, cities, but all in all, we really can use and should use what we got and use that as a trade good. For example, in this city, I think with the wood and meat trade, we might be onto something. We might be even cranking up the meat production via more pastures if we'd wanted to. There's many and plenty ways of uh, getting the stuff done. You could just also spam more hunters, as these are insanely um, work force efficient. 
there's a lot of different ways how you can earn your money. In all scenario, I think we're going to stick with the wood and meat export, as this seems to be a really, really lucrative business. So I think what we're going to do now is we're going to build ourselves a bigger pasture around this corner, as I think this is something that we can do. Our people here are not going to miss the meat as a foodstuff and the the really nice side effect of that is also that if you'd ever needed the food super badly you can stop exporting the meat and use it for your own city in a nutshell i would strongly recommend you to have a bit of um of a food industry that you can easily that you won't be missing for on your city as this is a real good the venue of income so for example i've seen that in this environment here we have extremely costly vegetables so if my population wouldn't be crazy about that i would be also considering to just put up uh, vegetable farms and uh, get it down right so this pasture will have an output of 14.4 daily and as you see here the farmer the the hunters would be way more efficient if you drill down your city down just to efficiency, you will build a lot different. You can do this to your own liking. I personally see many different ways of getting the job done. It all boils also down to what kind of uh, civilization you play. So every species has specific um, bonuses when they do work or specific um what's it called penalty <laughs> penalties when they have to do other work so they they do like certain things there is a difference between fulfillment and skill here so mushroom farms for example provide our um people here a very low fulfillment but they have a very high skill on that and here when we get over to this farming fulfillment 100 person so they like that a lot and skill 140 person so they also are good at it this game makes a crass differentiation between liking things and being good at things my favorite example for that are the dondorians which are super good at mining but they hate it like, they are excellent miners, but look at that. Fulfillment is 30%. There's nothing they hate more than digging out ore or coal. That's even worse. But they are super good at it. So, you see, this is something you should always uh, pay attention to when you're deciding what kind of industries you want to build in your city. As sometimes your citizens will be so bad at things that it might be even better to just import the stuff as it is a real stupid idea to get the job done here by yourself. So, fulfillment zero person, by the way, means that they really hate the, to do this. Like, seriously, don't do this to these people. As we see here, our people, they, they really don't like uh, herding too much. They prefer farming all over the board. But, well, it's just one example. In this, ex in this scenario, if you wanted to make it more efficient, export-wise, go for the hunter. Here, I, I really like the idea of having just a pasture, but I personally like to build my cities also a lot about, well... Want to call it gut feeling but i like to not optimize as much as uh, think about how a, a city would grow organically and stuff like that storytelling via via building but either way we are going to continue this next episode so sadly i haven't had the necessary money to buy all the pottery that we wanted but that's not the problem We'll do that next episode. It ain't much to say about that, except for you press that button, the quality of the food stalls goes up, and henceforth your janitors will always need some pottery to repair that stuff. End of the story. There's not much more to explain. We're going to press the, sh uh, the, the fancy button next time, and I will start introducing industries there, and we'll see about that how this develops in the course of the time. Right now, the rate meter, by the way, goes up. 
instead of down, but it would go up harder if we wouldn't have soldiers, I suppose. Anyways, next episode, Industries. We're going to start building a entire chain of uh, things. I want to start with stuff like cotton to fabric to clothing, and probably we're going to go into mining. There's a lot of things that I want to talk about in the upcoming episodes, as the city has now reached a stable point, and we're going to have some fun with expanding on top of that. So, thanks for watching, thanks for your plentiful responses, I really enjoy how much uh, you guys are enjoying this, obviously, and I hope you had a good time, leave a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and as usual, there's a description box down there leading to Discord, where you can join up and have a chat with me or like-minded gamers. You can also check out the playlist for this entire tutorial series, or you also might check out Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee. I'd be more than delighted if you did, and a lot of appreciation for you watching this video until the bitter end. I really, really appreciate, and I hope you're coming back when we are going to go over the more sophisticated and more interesting parts of material processing here. Have a good one. See you there.